What's up guys, Shane and Fika 3D Printing, and today's gonna be part four of my Hypercube build, and I need to make some changes because I screwed some things up, and we're gonna see if we can get it working. Welcome back guys. As I said, I made a few screw ups, and I wanted to change a few things around just because I just wanted to. Uh, I wasn't particularly happy with the anti-backlash nut, the T8 nut, and I had some of the Durlin ones, which I'll show you guys here. So why did I make that change? Well, I feel that this, well I can see that I have less movement in the Z-axis on a wobble, and I also think that's just because there is so much more surface area touching the lead screw than there was with the T8 nut using the spring and the anti-backlash deal. Is the anti-backlash really necessary? Mm, probably not. It's probably not doing too much in here, but it can't hurt. But either way, I think I just like that better. So all I had to do was move my Z axis. So it is a, it's like this. I had to move this cross beam back. And I only had to move it back 10 millimeters in order to make it reach. And it was super simple to do that. It took maybe 20 minutes to do on my own. Uh, and I just did it after uh, the hours. All right, so as you see here, I have the MKS Gen 1.4 board wired up and ready to go. I have it hooked up here to a TFT32, so a 3.2 inch touch screen. That's gonna be what I'm gonna use to control the printer and everything. I also have all of the motors, the end stops, and the thermistors wired up in order to ensure everything functions the way it should. These may or not be the thermistors I use, but I just wanna make sure that the board actually can read thermistors in general and we're gonna be able to check to make sure that this actually works. So I went ahead and loaded up the, well I should say, I put on some A4988 drivers into the Z axis and the extruder, because that's all you really need for those. And then for the X and Y, I went ahead and put in some TMC2100 drivers uh, reconfigured into spread cycle mode. So that's the mode that's most conducive for 3D printing. You can print a little bit faster using that, a little bit louder than Stealth Chop, but Stealth Chop you actually miss if you start going too fast. I'm not sure how Stealth Chop will work on this. It's generally not recommended for 3D printers, but uh, that's a totally different story. I actually got these from Banggood, and I told them I wanted to use that in this build, and they sent it to me to use, and I'll see how they work, and they've already been reconfigured. I cut the pins, put in the jumper on there in order to reconfigure them, and it is actually running in 16 steps right now. I also have tried it in 32 steps just to check things out, but right now we're running everything in 16 steps. And I don't know if it was on there last time, but as you can see, I have the heated bed on there right now, it's a little bit tight for you know, what it's supposed to be. I'm, I'm not sure if my spacing was off by a little bit or maybe the 3D printed parts are just off by a bit, but it actually is bowing in the middle a little bit just because it's so tight uh, on the X for some reason. And again, I, I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it'll get a little looser once I put some springs in there, but I literally just threw it on there. I wanted to see how it was and it gives me a little bit of a, a visual guidance to how the extruder carriage is going to move and it had already been pre-wired with this. Now, I'm thinking about changing that up, so I'll probably talk about this later, but I actually bought a Ultra Base, the Anycubic Ultra Base. It came on the Anycubic i3 that I'm working on reviewing right now. It is pretty awesome, and I got the whole thing. It's heated bed, everything all together in one. All I have to do is then wire it up here into the board. So I don't know which I'm gonna end up going with. I might end up doing that one because this is probably gonna be a PLA only machine. That's all I really print with anyways. Either way, I think it will be a interesting thing to test out at least and see how it works on a different printer. Now, let's talk about some things that I screwed up before we do a test, and what I screwed up is actually my Y. I did not print it long enough, or I should say, I didn't cut it long enough. I could have swore that I measured everything the way it is, and I'm pretty sure I did everything the way it was in Tech2C's video. But I don't know, somehow I screwed up because when I pull the Y forward, I am losing like 40 millimeters off the Y. So I'm actually only getting about 160 to 170 on the Y. It goes back far enough, just doesn't go forward far enough. And the X is fine. So I'm actually getting all 200 millimeters on there. And the Z I'm seeing, I think 185, 190, somewhere around there. So I do wish I would have cut these a little bit longer as well. So that's, again, a lot of people have been asking me, oh, what are your sizes, what are your sizes? Please, I am not going to publish those because I clearly screwed up and I don't want you to make the same mistake as me. I bought enough extrusion to basically make two of these. So one and then a whole bunch for spare because I knew I was gonna mess up and I did. So what I have to do now 
is I want to do a function check the electronics, make sure that works. Then I have to take everything apart, basically take the cut the printer in two, and then I have here all of the new 2020, and then I have the new 2040s for the sides, and then I have the new smooth rods. And it was another thing I miscalculated was how long the smooth rods needed to be. Now these ones are longer than the current Y ones that are there, so that's good. But they're not quite long enough though. It's they're just a smidgen too short. So what I ended up doing is I remixed Tech2C's uh, smooth rod holders. I can't remember the exact name, but I did already remix them. It's already on Thingiverse, so the link will be down in the video description. Basically, I made them eight millimeters longer. That way I can have a better hold on the end of this because it doesn't go all the way to the end as it should. And I went ahead and added in a second uh, screw hole there to mount another screw in or bolt and nut and I made them captive so that you can insert M3 uh, lock uh, lock nuts in there or the nylocks and that way it'll be held it'll be it'll be easier to put it in none of Tech2C stuff originally had any of that uh, the one guy Arthur he made a lot of these remixed parts that are out there and they all have captain nuts which are great but again I just had to make these myself only because my rods are a little too short. You can use these with a longer rod. It just gives you more of a hold on it. And it is more than enough. Like they are nowhere near long enough to interfere with any of your build uh, size, any of your build size in this configuration. Again, yours might be a little bit different. So if you want to go ahead and use these, the link's down below in Thingiverse. And I remix. this is the one that goes here in front of the motor. And then the other three are all the same. So yeah, you have those to play with. Okay. Let's get a power supply hooked up into this, and then I already have some G-code on the SD card, and we're gonna load it up, see how it sounds, and make sure that it homes right in the right direction, and all that, and we'll go from there. All right, so now we can have power to it. Everything looks okay. We're gonna go to home, and we're gonna home everything. So Z drops down, X homes, Y homes, and Z homes okay, and it sounds really good. Uh, it's nice and quiet, as you can hear, because that is because of the TMC 2100s. Very, very quiet, and I really like that. So now we can just leave this. We're going to go to, uh, let's see where we have print, and then I just have a test here. It's set to zero for the temperatures. It's just in order to actually print. I don't know if you're listening, if you can hear it, but it's super duper quiet. The only real noise is the vibration of the 2020 extrusion into my table, and that's where you hear most of the vibrations coming from, any of the audible noise. But yeah, I mean, it's really quiet, 150. So definitely you can hear it getting quite a bit louder and the vibration, you can really feel it in the frame as it gets going. But yeah, I mean the iGIST uh, bearings, the RJMP0108s are what I'm using here on the Y axis. On the X axis, I am using the iGIST uh, eight millimeter bushings, or I think those are 10 millimeter. Either way, I'm using their bushings for on the, the rolled carbon fiber rods, which are really nice and light. They feel rigid enough. Again, they are the other, uh, they are 10 millimeter. So they are 10 millimeter by eight millimeter. So they have a two millimeter wall on them. A 10 by six would be better because it's thicker, uh, more rigid, but I couldn't find that. So this is what I ended up getting. And again, once we actually start printing with it, we'll see how it goes from there. Either way, everything works. Uh, there's one thing I want to show you on the extrude carriage that I need to fix that Tech2C did talk about and I'll show you that now. So Tech2C did mention something about when he uses the bushings, he was having some, um, I don't know if it's deflection is the word, but either way, he was having some wobble. As you can see, I have just about maybe half a millimeter wobble in this. And what he did is he ended up putting some tape under here and canting, cantering, canting, uh, basically offsetting 
each of the bushings just a little bit so they would actually rub more on the actual rods here in order to get rid of this play. And yeah, same as me, yeah, it's about half a millimeter at most. And it is, as you can see, it's very, very slight. So yeah, fixing the extruder is something I will have to do in the eventual time, but I'm going to then spend now probably the next hour ripping most of this apart and getting these new rails put on because it's going to take some time. So I'm not going to time lapse it. I'll see you guys in just a second. Okay, so I'm back and as you can see here, the Y is much, much larger than what it was before. Here is the original one. If you take a look, I've added on, I believe it was 60 or I want to say it was 60 millimeters. I added on to the front or to the Y axis. That way I would be able to easily clear the bed. So also being able to do that is I like when the hot end is just off the bed. That way it's easy to purge and whatnot. It's just a personal preference of mine. So I went ahead and moved some things around. The max that I have currently set, I guess, in the firmware is 205 millimeters for the Z. And I could probably squeeze another... 15 or 20 millimeters out of that. So I will eventually update the firmware to allow me to go all the way and we'll squeeze every little bit out of this we can. And because I've done this, I can get the absolute complete 205 by 210 is what technically what you can do on these beds, these 200 beds. And I can fit exactly that size. So that will be really cool if I can tune in my offsets for where the extruder is off of the bed. And yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for that. So I'm going to let you guys watch how it homes because I just went ahead and moved everything around the Z all the way down, make sure it didn't bind because I put in the new um, anti-backlash nut and that worked out well. So yeah, let's go ahead and home everything. So there's the X, the Y, and Z. Do love how quiet those TMC 2100s are. They are super quiet drivers. I really like it. So I can tell by looking at my bed, I am off cantered a little bit. So something in here is twisted a little bit and I will need to investigate on what exactly that is. That's a little hard to try and square up this 2020 aluminum extrusion. Really got to get it right. So clearly the bed is not perfect yet. Uh, again, here are the remixed Y shaft mounts that I had uh, created. And again, if you want to download these and use these on yours, you can use it for the regular rods if you want. I mean, his are just, they're really small. I mean, they only hold about six or seven millimeters of the rod. And again, these hold, I wanna say 15 roughly is what I set them to. Either way, they hold a lot more of the rods. So they have a lot better grip and they're using two screws on them. I did notice though that my captive nut holes are not actually big enough. So I will fix that and I'll update the remix, but regardless, down below in the video description, you can go ahead and download those. And that's gonna be it for today. So we have all this done. The next thing I'm going to do is the bed. I'm gonna go ahead and square that up and try to figure out why it's bowing. Maybe I need to spread them out just a little bit more. Maybe they're just quite not, just, it's just off by a little bit. I might've cut that center beam off by like a millimeter or two, and hence why I'm having the bowing of my heated plate, heated plate, that. And I might have cut that uh, bar just like a millimeter or two too short. And that way I'm getting a bowed build plate because it's so tight together. It was really tight to get those on. Or I could just go ahead and remix the mounts that hold the build plate on and call it a day. I don't know, but we'll see what I end up doing in order to make that work out. Once I do that, I can put on the extruder and then we can go ahead and get some prints done with this. And then we can kind of do some of the aesthetic things. So I do have a MOSFET that I had, uh, a case that I created in order to mount to the bottom of the heated plate. There's a cable chain that I went ahead and printed out. There is, as you already see here, the plate that is holding on the MKS. I just have it here in the front. It's easier for me to plug in and play with and be able to modify things, get my uh, driver voltages set just the way I want them to. So yeah, so the next one's gonna be putting the extruder on and I should be able to get this printing. I have to decide about the extruder if I'm gonna use his extruder or if I'm going to just throw a Titan on there because I have a few knockoffs laying around. And yeah, so it's coming along. So part five will be big. Hopefully we can get some prints done. I thank you guys for watching this series. I know it's been popular and a lot of people have been asking about it. So thank you for bearing with me as I do this along with the reviews and other things that I also enjoy doing here on the channel. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Talk to me in the comments down below. If you liked it or didn't like it, I'd like to see what you think about the project. And if I should do anything differently, I would love to hear from you. If you want to support me, help build this kind of project, 
Biggest thing to do is hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon that we get an email notification anytime I upload cool new videos like this one. And if you guys worry financially, again, money can help me build more machines like this. There's a Patreon link down below. Don't even dollar more. I greatly appreciate it. Current Patreons, you guys are awesome as always. And if you want to help me out without directly donating me, affiliate links are down there. Uh, again, there's some parts here that I will link down there as well. And if you want to build your own Hypercube, down there will also be a bunch of links that you guys should look into, including Tech2C's videos. They're very good. So I thank you guys for watching. Until next time, happy printing.